A unique gathering of educators, religious leaders, and students from around the world begins today in Jerusalem, meant for young people, including Israelis and Palestinians, to explore ways to create a culture of peace building through encounter. 150 people are attending the conference, which is held in the Hebrew University and sponsored by Pope Francis, and will end on Wednesday. The Vatican is strongly involved in this conference. Is it usual to see the Vatican so heavily invested in Middle Eastern affairs? Well, it's not actually that unusual, but this is a lot more direct than their prior than their prior statements. Now, the Pope has made statements in the past regarding the peace process, and that's very likely going to influence the sort of ideas we're going to see at this education conference. The Pope has strongly endorsed a two-state solution, and that is going to be a big political question that comes up over the course of the education year. Now, the Pope and the uh, the Pope is sponsoring this event, and the Vatican is endorsing this event. The idea being to present peace and ideas and educations revolving around around peace and contributing to peace. So what ideas are we going to see? Uh, excuse me, some people are trying to move me in the middle of a live, but we are going to see some of these ideas come up over the course of this uh, event. We are going to see ideas in these politics. There's probably going to be a lot of controversy as the ideas of the Vatican can clash with the ideas of the Israeli government on what peace is going to look like and what peace is going to mean. But here, for one week, the idea is bringing a lot of people from around the world together to explore the differences between cultures and to acclimatize them to different cultures. Now Israel says it has struck a Syrian military position in response to stray fire from across the border. The IDF reportedly hit an artillery battery in the Syrian-controlled section of the Golan Heights. The area has been a regular flashpoint between Israel and Syria for the past 50 years. Now this follows five almost identical incidents in the Syrian and Israeli sections of the Golan Heights throughout the past week. In Syria, at least eight people have been killed in Damascus after a suicide bomber blew up his vehicle in the city. State TV said around a dozen others were injured in the devastating blast, the worst in the Syrian capital since March. The force of the explosion ripped apart several cars in the central neighborhood. According to reports, police had been chasing three suspected car bombers in a bid to prevent them from entering the city center, while two of the drivers were stopped. The third is said to have blown himself up after being surrounded. Well, my Celebrations have taken place across Canada to mark the country's 150th birthday. The biggest party was in the capital, Ottawa, where thousands joined Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, accompanied by Prince Charles and his wife, Camilla Parker Bowles. Addressing crowds on Parliament Hill, Trudeau paid tribute to Canada's diversity. Canada is a country made strong, not in spite of our differences, but because of them. And our greatest pride is that you can come, come here from anywhere in the world, build a good life, and be part of our community. We don't care where you're from, or what religion you practice, or whom you love. You are all welcome in Canada! Thousands have turned out in the British capital for the not one day more anti-government march. In central London where thousands of people have come out onto the streets to protest Theresa May's government. Now this is not the first protest taking place in London in recent weeks, but it's certainly the biggest we have seen recently. Thousands of people filling these streets 
marching from the BBC headquarters towards Parliament Square. They're all here, they say, because they want the Tories out. There's a handful of issues that people are really disappointed with, from austerity measures to the handling of Brexit to the coalition with the DUP to the Grenfell Tower tragedy. Really, the list is long and people want Theresa May to go. This is why. The gap is widening between so many, so many people. There's mass inequality and it's just not fair and it doesn't have to be that way. I'm here today, well, as a protest against this austerity that the Conservative government has imposed on this nation. I'm here to support people who are in struggle because it's becoming increasingly more of a struggle to be back to, to be in this, in this country. A massive fireworks display lit up the already dazzling skyline of Hong Kong Saturday night. The Chinese government has put on a three-day celebration here, trying to project strength and unity. But at a swearing-in ceremony for Hong Kong's new chief executive, who is backed by Beijing, Chinese President Xi Jinping gave a stern warning to pro-democracy forces in Hong Kong. Any attempt to endanger China's sovereignty or challenge the power of the central government, he said, crosses a red line and is absolutely impermissible. That did not sit well with thousands of protesters who demonstrated Saturday. They want the Hong Kong people to listen and to, play, to obey everything they, they, they say. But I mean, freedom is a basic human right. We cannot give it up. So we come out and protect our freedom. They want China's government to respect the one country, two systems model that has allowed Hong Kong to maintain a high level of autonomy and freedom since British rule ended here in 1997. I think we are unhappy because our way of life is under threat. Lawyer and author Jason Ng says after massive protests shut down parts of the city in 2014, Beijing has tightened its grip on Hong Kong, even blocking lawmakers from taking office who were not considered loyal to the central government. U.S. President Donald Trump honored military veterans in Washington on Saturday at a Kennedy Center event that resembled a political rally. Using the podium to lash out at the news media, Trump said the fake media tried to stop him from going to the White House, but he is the president and they're not. The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them because the people know the truth. The fake media tried to stop us from going to the White House, but I'm president and they're not. I want you all and all of our incredible wounded warriors to know you have an entire nation of more than 300 million people behind you. And our nation's getting strong again. Do you notice? getting strong again. Trump also used the opportunity to defend his travel ban on travelers from six Muslim majority countries. One of the most grave and dire threats to religious freedom in the world today is the threat of terrorism. And specifically, it just seems it's called radical Islamic terrorism. Jakarta Governor Bazuki Tijahashapurnama, an ethnic Chinese Christian, was sentenced in May to two years in prison for blasphemy in Indonesia. Former U.S. President Barack Obama, who lived in Indonesia for part of his childhood, has said some words on the situation. Obama said that the country is very diverse and the Muslim community has historically shown tolerance to different practices such as Hindu and Buddhist ideals. The former president didn't mention any specific cases but did say that anyone should fight against the us versus them mentality. After banning political appearances by Turkey's President Erdogan on the sidelines of the G20 summit, Germany is eager to show it's being even-handed. Authorities are turning their attention to support for the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, on German soil. 
I think Turkey's right when it warns us and says we shouldn't allow the PKK to carry out propaganda activities in public, said Foreign Minister Zygmar Gabriel. The PKK has been banned in this country since the beginning of the 1990s, and rightly so, not only for what they've done in Turkey, but also because of protection rackets, drug trafficking and the arms trade in this country. It remains to be seen whether the move will contain a further erosion of ties with Turkey and its leader ahead of next week's gathering in Hamburg. Germany has stressed that President Erdogan will be a welcome and valued guest. Supposed Russian interference in neighboring Finland is the focus of new NATO research. It claims the country is vulnerable to Moscow's hybrid influence, such as spreading disinformation or setting up front organizations. It's despite the alliance continuing to conduct military drills near the Russian border, though. There'll be other drills in the region too, except they're going to have a very different goal. They're described as the first ever peaceful war games in that area. 30 Swedish and Russian activists will take part in a two-day exercise called Aland 17 this autumn. The setup uh, uh, is that war is already underway in their plan. Uh, the team's goal is to then try to de-escalate that conflict. Check this out. When we see that there's more and more tension between two countries, there will be bigger pressure on all, all voices of peace. We somehow have to be prepared if this escalation continues. That means we somehow have to be prepared when it becomes more difficult to speak up for peace. So what we are doing actually is that we are preparing voices of peace to stand up for themselves and make sure that their voices are heard. There are reasons for the location and the timing of this event. The Island Islands were demilitarized under an agreement between Sweden and the Russian Empire a century and a half ago. Now, today, they're part of Finland's territory. As for the timing, well, Sweden will be conducting its largest military exercise in 20 years at the same time as Russia holds large-scale drills of its own. Finland's former ambassador to Russia suspects the peace group's event is a Moscow ploy to sway public opinion. Here's what the organizer thinks of that claim. He wants to claim that we are something that we are not. Because he wants us, he wants to show that we are agents of a foreign power. Like as soon as you stand up for peace, people within your own country will say that you are a traitor. New Jersey's government is in shutdown mode. Governor Chris Christie ordered a government shutdown Saturday morning after the state legislature was unable to agree on a budget before Friday's midnight deadline. This is the first time New Jersey's had a government shutdown since 2006, which also means it's a first for Christie. Christie placed blame for the shutdown on Assembly Speaker Vincent Prieto. The lawmakers have been at odds over a bill that would affect the state's largest health insurance company. The bill Christie once passed would allow the government to pull reserve funds from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. But Prieto argues the bill has nothing to do with the state's budget and called Christie's actions extortion. Non-essential facilities like state parks and beaches will likely be closed during the shutdown. State prisons, hospitals, police departments, and other essential facilities will remain open. And New Jersey isn't alone. Maine is also in the midst of a partial government shutdown. And Illinois hasn't had a budget in three years. President Donald Trump is, quote, sending feds to Chicago to fight gun violence, despite there being a number of federal agents working there already. On Friday, the Department of Justice and the Chicago Police Department announced that 20 agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, or ATF, and four ballistic specialists had teamed up with state and city police to create the Crime Gun Strike Force. The city has been asking for more federal help fighting crime and gun violence since the start of Trump's term, and even when former President Barack Obama was in office. New Strike Force members will join 41 ATF agents already in Chicago. The Strike Force will target the illegal flow of guns into the city as well as repeat gun crime offenders. But in Friday's White House press briefing, Deputy Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said Chicago's crime problem had more to do with, quote, morality than gun control. 
A tower of human skulls dating back several hundred years has been uncovered beneath Mexico City. Archaeologists found more than 650 skulls, including those of women and children, caked in lime near the site of Templo Mayor, one of the main temples in the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan, which would later become Mexico City. The massive array of skulls were built to install fear into the Spanish conquistadores when they captured the city under General Hernán Cortés and were mentioned in contemporary accounts. The discovery brings to the surface questions about the culture of sacrifice in the Aztec Empire. A warning going out to America's critical infrastructure companies in the nuclear and energy sectors. Beware. Hackers are trying to break into your computer networks. Hackers have been trying at least since May to gain access to networks by sending out deceptive emails aimed at stealing logins and passwords According to a joint report by Homeland Security and the FBI, seen by Reuters, they've had some success, the report states, without naming which company's networks have been compromised. Neither government agency could be reached for comment. The report, which was sent out this past week to energy companies, comes at a time of growing cyber threats. A virus dubbed NotPetya started infecting computers on Tuesday and quickly spread, wreaking havoc across the globe crippling thousands of computers and disrupting business operations at ports, law firms, and factories. And in May, there was the global WannaCry ransomware attack. The energy sector is vulnerable to those seeking to disrupt the nation's utilities. Several energy companies contacted by Reuters declined to comment on efforts to stop hackers from getting into their networks. At least 25 freight train cars carrying crude oil derailed Friday night in Illinois. Officials say about 40,000 gallons of oil have leaked. The fire department has managed to contain the spill and prevent it from containing contaminating a nearby river. Sergeant Mike Fisher is with the Plainfield Police Department. Hopefully going to get it uh, cleared up as fast as we can, but we ask the people be patient because this is obviously a large scale incident and it's going to take quite a bit of time to get it contained, cleaned up and uh, so that we can move forward with normal operations of the town. No injuries have been reported. The cause of the derailment is under investigation. Torrential rain in central China's Hunan province raised the water of the Shangjiang River, a major tributary of the Yangtze River, to record levels Sunday morning. The water level in the section of the river in Changsha, the capital of Hunan province, reached 39.21 meters at 6.30 a.m. on Sunday. Already at 3.2 meters above the warning level, the water is expected to continue to rise as heavy rain is forecast for upstream regions over the next few days. According to the Provincial Meteorological Service, so far over 310,000 people were forced to evacuate. Nearly 300,000 hectares of crops were damaged and more than 6,000 and houses were destroyed. Various European and Asian countries are struggling with extreme weather with heat waves on one hand and heavy downpours on the other. Moscow recently saw its heaviest rainstorm in nearly half a century, killing one and injuring many. The northern and western parts of India are also seeing torrential rain. Central Greece, for its part, saw temperatures rise to 44 degrees Celsius this month. And Romanian authorities have declared code red for 20 countries as temperatures are expected to reach 40 degrees Celsius. In Iraq, high temperatures have led to power failures.